beep, but a beep, a beep, beep, says the droid or whatever it is that's making those sounds. Uh, welcome all. I am Nathan P. Butler. This is my YouTube channel. This is the Battlefront livestream podcast, as I call it again, podcast. Not because of a podcast in a traditional sense of, you know, an MP3 or something being released uh, through a podcatcher, but more of a vodcast style, I suppose. Uh, podcasts tend to be talk radio, and this uh, live stream series tends to be much more about the conversation with the people in the chat or the commentary about the game uh, while playing uh, or about uh, chats with guests that I bring on to stream with me uh, rather than being about just the gameplay itself. If you were just looking for the gameplay itself, I could drop the chat entirely, turn off the microphone, and just run through you know, dull gameplay that's much more fun to play than watch, right? Um, but we're jumping in here into Battlefront on the beginning day of the season of The Last Jedi. And my intention, depending on how I'm feeling, is maybe that this will be a few shorter streams tonight rather than maybe one long one. Just kind of depends. Been a little under the weather today as the weather outside has become pretty crappy here in the Atlanta area. Um, so depending on just how I'm feeling, I may wind up pausing, taking a break, starting up another stream at different times. It just kind of depends on... Uh, how things are going here. This, of course, is the time of day when my students have, for the most part, been making their way home through this mess. Um, though, of course, still keeping an eye on things the way that I always do here. Uh, multitasking, which is great. Um, so, if you don't know me, hello, NB Vlogs. Uh, if you don't know me otherwise, uh, I am the writer of A Saga on Home Video, which is a book uh, that is basically, as the subtitle says, a fan's guide to U.S. Star Wars home video releases, which you can find on Amazon. Uh, I also contributed to the recently released uh, A More Civilized Age, exploring the Star Wars Expanded Universe, in which I have an afterword for that entire series of essay books uh, that is opposite of Forward by Timothy Zahn, which is uh, uh, kind of fun. And then, of course... Um, beyond that, I am the author of the Star Wars Timeline Gold, the most comprehensive Star Wars chronology available anywhere, which you can find at StarWarsFanWorks.com slash timeline. Uh, I host Star Wars Beyond the Films with Mark Herleman over at StarWarsReport.com and Cloud City Casino, a Star Wars gaming podcast um, with Michael Morris over at StarWarsReport.com as well. There's that Star Wars Report t-shirt that uh, Riley uh, of the Star Wars Report sent over to me. Uh, and, of course, on this YouTube channel, you'll find stuff like From the Star Wars Home Video Library and Fantasy Flight Games reviews and stuff like that. So a uh, little bit of everything going on. My Patreon is patreon.com slash Nathan P. Butler. I think that's all the stuff out of the way uh, so we can get rolling here. Uh, NP, I do not. I do not play Fortnite at all. All right, so here we go. Um, again, picking up with uh, Battlefront here. For what it's worth, when you first sign in today, um, today being December 5th, of 2017 when you first sign in before you get to this screen that you always come to uh, there's actually another screen that shows up first and it basically tells you to pick a side because we're beginning this whole faction play thing which is similar to some degree to the faction play of something like a Mortal Kombat X where you're gonna have to pick resistance or first order and whichever side you pick essentially you'll be able to complete challenges like those timed challenges except now they'll be tied to that faction and when you complete those faction challenges, you're being rewarded, but it builds up towards rewards for each faction um, that everybody involved in that faction presumably is going to get. Um, we don't have any new Last Jedi content being released, actually, until next week. On the 13th, that's when Finn and Phasma join as heroes. That's when the new A-Wing, I believe, gets added uh, as a hero ship. That's when we've got uh, the new map. On Crate uh, for Galactic Assault, that's when we get the new map at Dakar for Starfighter Assault. That's when we get the new Resurrection Story mission uh, to fill in some of the blanks of the campaign. So lots of new stuff coming, but the season of The Last Jedi actually kind of starts before that, so we can build up some Resistance stuff. But what it sounds like is that because you have to pick that faction, and that determines in part what you can unlock throughout the season of The Last Jedi, it kind of sounds like you may not be able to get everything because you can't switch factions once you choose it. So for a completist, this may be a nightmare because you may not ever be able to actually get everything the game has offered in terms of star cards or upgrades or whatever, depending on which factions you chose because you can't play as both. So just something to consider when you're choosing. I personally chose Resistance. I decided to go with the heroes in this case. Um, but you'll notice... After you do that, when you go under career, the challenges won't be called time challenges before the milestones anymore. Now, instead of time, it says the last Jedi. 
Um, because that's the season that we're in for the game. Remember, they're doing this as sort of a live service. Instead of DLC packs or instead of season passes, it's these seasons of free DLC content that are coming out. And they were trying to monetize it with the microtransactions. That didn't go so well. Um, so we're waiting to see if those come back, and if so, in what form. But you go under career, and instead of time challenges, there's your challenges for your faction. So again, I chose resistance. So we have the, well, rebel faction looking symbol here. Um, so we have Blast It, which is a short challenge, right? Which is uh, play five rounds of Blast. Just play five. Doesn't matter. Win, lose, kills, whatever. Um, you get 500 credits as a reward. And again, as it says at the bottom, complete the Last Jedi challenges to help the Resistance win the season and earn special rewards. Then we have Blast Them All, which lasts all the way up, presumably, until the end of the season. Hey, Epic. Um, which is going to take us to um, 42 days from now. So uh, take us all the way through the rest of December and into uh, uh, part of the way through January. Um, and in this case, it's defeat 50 enemies with each trooper class. Not a big deal. Just switch between your classes. You, a lot of people just in the time since the game has already been out have at least hit the 50 kills with each class thing to uh, do one of the early unlocks anyway. Not a huge deal. Um, just make sure that you're varying your classes. And again, same thing. Just complete the Last Jedi challenges to help the Resistance win the season and earn special rewards. Or First Order, whichever one you've chosen. Um, as you'll notice up there at the top, uh, my credits are up to just over... 12,500. The rationale for that is because basically we don't know yet exactly how you're going to have to unlock Phasma or Finn. More than likely, you're going to have to buy them on your collection screen with credits the same way that you had to buy Chewie, Vader, Palpatine, uh, let's see, Aiden, Leia, and Luke. Except when you had to do that, Luke was 15,000 by himself, Vader was 15,000, Aiden was 5,000, and the others were 10,000. And the ones beyond the ones that I mentioned were just available to, from the get-go. Um, that is a quarter of the, per, of the uh, amount that they were originally going to cost that they changed the day before the release of the Elite Trooper Edition. So, assuming the average is about 10,000, then you may need to save up 20k in credits to be able to purchase and use Finn and Phasma, for all we know. Um, they haven't said. So with a week still to go, I'm just saying screw it and not buying any crates. Instead, I'm just building up the credits. And if it turns out that I built up more than I need, okay, that's fine. They've also made some changes recently to um, the economy of the game. When you get your uh, daily crates, and hello Star Wars, hello uh, Jay Ellen, hello Jason. Um, uh, Star Wars case, you missed it a second ago, I did choose Resistance. Uh, when you get your daily crate, which in this case is uh, not going to show up for me for another 9 hours and 38 minutes, they have already increased the crafting materials and such you get out of those. Not by a ton, but enough to, to move along faster than like 5 crafting parts at a time that'll take you, you know, uh, 8 days to be able to get one common star card crafted. Um, they have increased that. And they have supposedly increased the amount of credits being rewarded for multiplayer matches. I haven't noticed a substantial increase, but a little bit of an increase maybe. We'll kind of look at that and spot it as we go. Um, they also increased the limit of credits that you can earn per day on the arcade mode. So generally what you would have done is if you went to arcade mode, let's say you went to solo, uh, to the battle scenarios, and just picked a side, picked a scenario, then you'd be able to play... But you'd be capped, and I think it was like 500 credits or something like that. They've now boosted that up to 1,500. So in theory, you could play 15 scenarios, getting 100 credits each, you know, fail or succeed, um, each day through the arcade mode, which will help you build your credits faster. It's still... Ah, excuse me, my nose is itchy. As it always seems to be, right, with the sinuses. Um... It seems as though that is a fast method, depending on which mode you choose. Um, but you're still going to get more out of any individual run through a scenario by playing multiplayer than you will by playing um, arcade. But a multiplayer match might last you 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on the scenario. Whereas usually one of the arcade scenarios is only going to run you less than 5 minutes each. Sometimes less than 3 minutes each, depending on the scenario. And each time is going to get you that 100. Um, I... Actually, I think it's for any time you do it, whether you get the star or not, or whether you've done the star or not. In fact, we may just, might as well just use one here. Um, but it's kind of cool. 
um, that they've boosted that up. I'm just going to jump in to wipe them out. It's uh, it's Onslaught, it's Thede, I don't really care, but I need to get more kills with heroes anyway. Um, I'll go ahead and jump on Tier 2, because I haven't done it yet. You start with a minute, you have to kill 30. Uh, there are apparently two classes. Let's see here, I'm assuming that is Assault and a Heavy class that you're up against. Precise minim Minimap, Fast Ability Recharge. Why not? Whatever. Um... But the key thing being, you'll see on the reward screen that you're getting credits, and they had had that capped where it would say, you know, you know, uh, you can earn more credits in X amount of hours and minutes. Well, they're still capped, but they've increased the cap. So it's a little bit more useful if you're someone who likes to play those scenarios. Um, I kind of feel like those scenarios are sort of like jumping on Destiny and doing like the daily strike or whatever. Um, which I haven't, I haven't played Destiny since the first one. Um... But just sort of this idea of if you really are trying to farm those credits, then you might as well jump in, blaze through a handful of those scenarios real quick, get the credits from it, then jump into multiplayer and start getting the most out of the experience as far as milestones for that. I mean, there are milestones for Arcade. It's just that they're not as interesting, in my opinion, as going up against human players. Uh, for those who watch the channel for other stuff, by the way... I'll use Maul. Let's see what I got. Frantic Strikes, Melee Strikes, Drain, 5% less stamina. Sure, why not? Um, the other option is to go with the Rocket Droid. Um, for what it's worth, uh, on the channel later tonight, you'll be able to see a new episode of From the Star Wars Home Video Library that's going to look at the UK Steelbook Trilogy sets from 2013. And then if you are a uh, person who is uh, part of the highest tier of my Patreon, the so-called Nobility of the Butler Universe, which is the $10 plus tier... Uh, for the monthly pledges, then you will be able to check out a new Patreon Q&A probably tonight. If not tonight, tomorrow. I just got to finish editing it. Hey! Oh, yeah, I forgot. He doesn't... He doesn't freaking have the ability to block. The big thing here is just the time limit. Ah! Dang it, die! It takes too many hits to kill these guys, in my opinion. It's like, dang, that lightsaber is killing them, but it's killed them slowly. And for what it's worth, it's not like when you die, it's over. It's just when you die, you, you have to respawn. There are things for doing it without dying, but if you play, if you do that, you're playing it a little safe. So I find it's easier to knock out a star the first time and just not care. And then your second time, third time, or whatever through, that's when you start focusing on, uh... There you go, guys. That's when you start possibly focusing on something else. I guess I could just be doing that like crazy, given the fact that it's got the fast ability recharge. Boom! Done! There you go. Yeah, agreed, Harry. It's definitely, um... Um... Has a great look to it. Okay, there you go. So you see, the points aren't gonna do you any good. Points don't matter. Really. Um, the tier being completed and whether you get the star or not goes towards unlocking the bearded Han Solo appearance variant. Um, you gotta get all three stars on all the different scenarios to do that which I think is like 48 or something like that. Um, but then the credits awarded thing is what they've boosted up. So it's only 100 here, but you could keep doing this over and over and over and over and over again. And you see there, it didn't take very long, right? So you just blaze through, there's 100 credits. Blaze through again, 100 credits. Blaze through again, 100 credits. Um, and build yourself up a nice, you know, pile of, of credits there. What I can show you here, I'm actually curious what happens if you lose, if you've done it the first time, but I... I did one um, yesterday where I, it's a more advanced one, where I lost, but I still got 100, and then I beat it and got 100. So I'm just going to grab Maul, take him into the middle of these guys, and just let him kind of chill. Hey guys, what's up? Oh shit, I got to kill one before it, there we go, now it counts. What's up guys? What's up? 
Okay, I was trying to do an emote, and apparently he did the emote without actually speaking. Come on, guys. Just bring it on. Kill me. Either Well, not even kill me. It mainly is just a matter of running out the timer. But I want to see if you've already done something and got the star. If you replay it, are you still getting the 100 credits? I believe you are, but I think that's an important thing to know for those who are trying to make the most out of just blazing through a bunch of these scenarios for no other reason than to max out the credits each day. Yup! You just guys just kill him. He just killed himself. Uh, but it doesn't count as a kill for me. And notice when you die, the count does uh, restart where it left off. Whereas when you first spawn, the count... Woo! Oh, there you go. There's his, there's his evasive. Um, the count starts out um, only once you kill somebody. This is like that movement you can do in the new Doom VFR game with the D-pad. Okay, so. Defeat. No time remaining. Got it, got it, got it. I'm assuming you still get the credits. Yes. Just crappy points, right? And no kills or anything towards the milestones. So in theory, if you've already done like the arcade milestones and all you're trying to do is just go in there for the credits, go into one of the onslaught modes kill one guy to start the timer and just let the timer run out by a minute. You just got to make sure that you're nearby to respawn when the time comes. And you don't even have to really be playing. You can be sitting there doing something else and there's your 1,500 credits. Um, which is only a little bit more active of play as the whole fact that you've got... Uh, yeah, see, there's your um, arcade stuff. Um, as when you're playing the regular game, how it's... They're, apparently, they're going to reward victorious teams a little bit more now. Um, as part of this economy update, but they didn't make it clear if that's active yet or not. I think it is. Um, either not, either that, or it's coming on Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday. But basically, most of your score is based on how long you're in there, how long you're in the match, as opposed to whether you won or not and, you know, how you scored. So, knowing that, um, and the fact that people would just basically get on and use a rubber band to hold their button down or hold a button so that it treated them as if they were there even though they were away from the game and the characters just like running in a circle or something. Um, that was being used. Now Arcade has the ability to be farmed a little bit, but they put the cap on it so that you can't farm it constantly like that. They do want to keep the uh, credit generation primarily to multiplayer for what it's worth. Uh, and yeah, the character model for Han Solo and a beard was just bad. Really, really bad. All right, so I got to do uh, five rounds of blast to get that challenge in. So I'll do that, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure that my s my assault is okay. Improve thermal detonators, survivalist, and kill streak vanguard. That works. Um, I need to get those. I'm still working on the CR2 kills and the vanguard um, milestone, where you got to get three kills with the vanguard in one activation five times. I've done it once. So I'll still work on those, so blast. Also known as Team Deathmatch on every other game. TDM. Hoth, Outpost Delta. If your weapon overheats, hit the colored spaces in the overheat skill game to remove the time something. Hard to see with Hoth being so bright. Um, my guess is that the uh, uh, like, like if I'm remembering correctly the way that it plays I don't think I've ever seen it described on here but basically if you hit the uh, the blue it just is an immediate uh, cooldown if you hit the yellow it's that you, for a little while it doesn't need a cooldown and you can just fire away for a very short time and generally, I don't tend to, but it's because we have so freaking many around, JL. I mean, even we've even got a ton of freaking lightning connectors now, and for a while, we had like one in the entire house. But we got tons of wires. We're, at, we're more likely to break a wire, or have it get shorted out, or have a cat chew through it, than uh, to lose one around here. Use the pulse, Luke. Or random trooper. 
Mark from Star Wars Beyond the Films is, te- is uh, messaging me asking if the novel Canto Bright showed up as a review copy, and yes, it did. And now you can see that things are reversed. So I will tell him, yes. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's the only quote I know from the Jimmy Neutron movie because I never actually saw it, but I saw the trailer and got hooked on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Actually had that on on a WMV file, I think, or an MPEG file that was set on loop to drive the cat's nuts years ago. All right, let's try this again. Whoa, shit balls. I'm here pressing the button to try to change my view to first person, and he's killing me. In any person. Ha! Not used to the smaller maps. I hardly ever play the smaller modes. So I need to kind of get used to that. Because that tends to be, like, that's what I've just... God damn! That's what I've discovered on, uh... Um, some of the, the galactic assaults that if you get used to the map, like for instance on Takeo Dana, there's a really good spot to set up turret kills. Um, but you gotta kinda get used to the map to begin with. And I am definitely not. Why it would kill assists only because I'm playing so cautiously, but I don't want to die again. I died a bunch already. Uh, do you have issues on Camino with the hallways being obnoxiously bright? Um, I would say yes, sort of. Um, they are very bright, but I actually really dig the brightness because when I've got HDR turned on, if I'm playing off stream, because you can't use HDR when you're playing on a stream, um, you have to actually manually turn it off. Um, if I'm playing in 4K with the HDR turned on, it is a really nice, um, clear distinction of uh, light and darkness levels. Um, like you can really tell the HDR difference on Camino. Damn, I just need to be a, like, my thing is shooting at, shooting at a distance, as you can tell. I just need to switch back to specialist or use my dual zoom on my officer instead of friggin' assault. Since I need the kill streak vanguard thing. I'll wait and do that on a different map. Let's go back to officer. Yeah, that's that dual zoom, by the way. This is the S5, which is the second, the first gun you unlock, unless you have the Elite Trooper Edition. It's the first one that has to be unlocked, but then once you unlock it, you got it. Um, that's the dual zoom that comes from, I want to say, 150 kills or something like that. It's got reduced recoil as the first modification you can get, but then this is the second modification. So you've got a dual zoom ability, which is nice. Who the... F- the shield will hold. Ah, shit! It's a freaking Wookiee! Ha! Shot you in your little Wookie Nads. Wookie Man's got Nards. I mean, still suck, but still. All right. Does that? Whoop! 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 Uh, did I like Disney's Robin Hood? Uh, never seen it. I think I've asked that before, but yeah, I've never seen it. Only Robin Hoods I've seen are Men in Tights, Prince of Thieves, and I saw the first couple episodes of that uh, UK uh, BBC television series. I actually think I've got the whole thing from uh, maybe iTunes back in the day from like a gift card, but I never got around to watching it. I think I just, it's slipped my mind ever since to even bother. Counting down. Anybody? 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 Nope. Now you can, I couldn't tell if there was gonna be somebody over there, but if I if I 
threw it and it went off and it actually did hit somebody, it would tell me. And if that's... If it told me, then I would know there was an enemy over there. So it's not completely useless to just randomly throw your flash grenade. It's pretty damn close to completely useless, but... Um, if you keep track of the little score indications underneath, then it's a little more helpful. Get out of my way! We will claim Triumph the Insult Comic Dog? Is that what that guy just said? Uh, Officer should now dual zoom. Well, it's, it's one modification on one gun, and this gun is designed as the long-range way of playing a specialist, or as an officer. Give the officer a break! He pretty much sucks! All he's got is friggin' pistols. At least one of the pistols is a better pistol. Ah, shit! Only survived that one because, well, for a second, because I activated the battle command on myself. Two and two. Suck! That's all right. Just got to play it five times, and I can play something I like. Not a big fan of Team Deathmatch on Proud Anything. I like the objective-based kind of stuff, or even the, um, like, retrieve and run kind of modes, depending on how it plays. Like, I loved um, Rift on Destiny 1. Um, and I really dig... I don't even remember what it's called. Um, the mode on a... What the heck? What just happened? My... Huh. That's weird. My targeting reticle changed. It's not the little T-looking thing. It's back to a cross-looking thing. Did I lose something off my gun? That's very strange. I mean, it doesn't matter, but... As long as it still does the dual zoom, but still, it's a little weird. Ah, shit! Man! I suck! Like I said, even with dual zoom, my twitch reflex isn't all that great. As far as, like, the very slight deviations in targeting. Like, if you're shooting at somebody, but you're just barely missing, my my twitch response to get to get uh, re-aimed by that slight amount is really shitty. Always has been. Except when playing on Vita or, uh, uh, I think there's one or two games on the Wii U that'll do it, and maybe one or two games on the PS4 that'll do it, but there are some games where um, you're able... Um, to control your aim by where you look or how you tilt the control so you can slightly adjust your aim by moving your hand. Or I think like in uh, Resident Evil 7, uh, when you're playing in VR, I believe you can uh, aim by where you... Fuck. Aim by where you look. Um, or adjust your aim by where you look, which has worked well. Turn down the sensitivity? I have not. I may look and see. Oh, we suck! We're dead! We're dead! It's over! Alright, yay! That's one out of five! Hmm. Of playing the mode that I least enjoy out of the entire game. Only reason I played Blast at all prior to this was, um... Blast is a good place to get the disruption kills. Because everybody's goal is kill as opposed to a certain objective, so if you follow one of your teammates and fire it off right before they get to somebody, it'll be helpful. Okay, I hope they're just not counting the Last Jedi stuff on this screen. Because, yeah, it's not on here. That's the only one that I really got much, got anything really for. Except the S5 and the officer kill. That's not even related to this match. It should have shown... Last Jedi on there too, but it does not. That's right, multitask. That was Disney Lucasfilm Press, however, comma, not Del Rey. Yeah, Mark is concerned because uh, we're supposed to be getting uh, review co review copies of a. Uh, Star Wars books from Disney Lucasfilm Press and from Del Rey. And Del Rey is usually really good about getting them to us. It's just that sometimes they get them to us before release, sometimes on release, sometimes well after, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Because um, by then we've already usually bought them and we could review them that way. 
Um, they just turn into giveaways on the podcast. But then um, Disney Lucasfilm Press is completely hit or miss on what they actually bother to send and when. Like, they sent Legends of Luke Skywalker to me. It showed up two or three weeks after it already came out. And they never did send it to Mark at all, I don't think. So, yeah. Okay, see, yeah, now my crosshairs is back to what it's supposed to be with the dual zoom. It's weird. Oh, shit. Hey, come on now. I'm not even in the room, you bastards. Don't make me use my young Sheldon voice on you. Or at least young Sheldon's family, which is basically uh, Hickerbilly 101. Empire Strikes Back, un unaltered, I'm assuming is broken. Uh, from the laser disc grips. Yeah, get them to release the, uh, yeah, if I, you know, had the ability to do the impossible. That would be something I would actually put on the list. How are they hitting me through the, okay, good, good, somebody came around. I was like, are they shooting me through the door? So what will it not play on, JL? If you can still open it in a computer, even if it won't play on another type of player, you could always just rip that disc and then reburn it onto a new disc. In theory. Or rip the disc and play it from a drive, but if it's so bad that it won't even be read by the computer, then you're kind of stuck. Yeah, they uh, they can't. I mean, they'd have to recreate them kind of the way that Harmy did for the Despecialized Edition because the original cuts, um, the original source material doesn't exist anymore. Because um, at the time they were making this, the THX Remastered stuff and the Special Editions, you had to actually uh, alter the original. They didn't quite, they weren't quite to the point that we are now where you can just do it and maintain the original. So, yeah. I mean, they could recreate it in theory. They just would have to recreate it. They would not be able to just do it. Like, like you couldn't have somebody up at the top of a uh, Disney or Lucasfilm say, "Do it," and have them actually do it. Instead, it'd be more like, "Do it." We can't. And then somebody gets fired, and then they, you know, it's like it's like every military movie where, or every uh, political movie where somebody refuses to follow orders, so they demote them or they fire them and then it's like who is next who's gonna do it oh you're not gonna do it either I'm gonna fire you too kind of stuff <sighs> I hate blast I hate blast it bores the shit out of me I'm probably gonna go ahead and jump back to the menu after this even though I know I've got three more to do because I want to make sure it's even counting them because it's not showing up there on that ending screen Uh, and now my freaking crosshairs has changed again. You notice that? Getting lots of points for player damage, but nothing for actually killing anybody. This round, at least. What the? And I have no idea where the doorways are. Nothing. I never play this mode. Or when I do play this mode, it's all it's you know it's because I have to to try to maximize some other milestone, and it winds up being uh, um, the same map over and over and over again. I don't know that I've ever even played Blast on Camino. Come on, bitches! Am I sh whoa as I'm reading the chat um, am I sure the two disc was taken from the 1993 laser disc from the definitive collection not an older release I am absolutely certain there is absolutely no debate argument or doubt about that 
with the exception of the opening of A New Hope, which was taken from a quality film release that they were able to scan in and then tack on to the rest of the Definitive Collections version of A New Hope. Aw, oh, come on! Yeah, twat! It sounded British there, didn't I? Americans don't usually use that as an insult. But it's Star Wars, where half the people are British and white. And then, like, the other half are almost all droids, and every once in a while you run into somebody who's black or Asian. Every once in a while. Yep. And if I remember correctly, it's also missing the, uh... C-3PO tractor beam line again, like they fixed it in 85 for the 86 release, and then when they remastered it, some idiot left it out again. Damn! They're taking losses. We've reduced their numbers by half. It's just not... I mean, it's just not feasible. You gotta... There's only so much you can do for that kind of upscaling. And even then, I mean, it's still, you won't have people agreeing like, Yay, it's the unaltered versions, because they wouldn't be the real unaltered version, you know? Not really. It'd be the 1993 version. A New Hope had the stereo version in theaters without the subtitle and a mono version in theaters without the subtitle then the stereo version in theaters with the subtitle which is the one that then made its way into a home video from uh, up until uh, 84 but then in 85 they wind up changing it with the the audio remastering and then they do the remastering again in 1993 so we're already several versions into a new hope at that point um, and you can't really call most of them unaltered altered slightly but not unaltered What you'd have to do is, I think kind of what Team Negative 1 did, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't they basically take an original stereo 35mm um, or 70mm copy and do their scan off of that? I mean, they didn't clean it up. They allowed it to be sort of a silver screen edition, as they called it, where it's still the... Uh, has all the grain and stuff you would expect of a theater at the time. But that's essentially what they did. Yeah, we just need to clean up something like that. But it still would be difficult to do a Blu-ray or a, um, not as much a Blu-ray, um, but a Blu-ray to an extent, but especially a 4K release off of that, because I'll, to make those, you really have to have a high-end um, film copy that you're able to then scan at the higher resolution um, straight off of that original copy. And once you have, like, a print that's made off of a copy, it's not quite the same thing anymore. But yeah, that'd be the more likely thing to do. And I would assume, surely there are copies of... If the original copies may not still be there. The original Masters may not still be there. But surely, at least some 35 or 70 millimeter copies of the films are still sitting at a Lucasfilm vault somewhere. <coughs> or hell, Steve Sansweet might have some at uh, Rancho Obi-Wan. And he's pretty tight with all the Lucasfilm folks. So, yeah. I mean, it's just there are... The, the ways to do it are just... They're not... They're not ideal. And you would still have people complain. And you'd have to change the mindset at Lucasfilm and probably the leadership at Lucasfilm to get there. But, I mean, it's just... It's not something that's going to happen anytime soon. That's not... All right, here we go. Oh, shit! Yay, that's two. Did we lose? Did we no win? I don't give now. a shit. All right, awesome. Can we move on to... Nope, can't move on. Got three more, but I'm at least going to go to the menu and make sure that it's accounting, because I'm just... Blast is also not good if you're mostly paying attention more to the chat than you are to the actual gameplay. Eh, it does seem like maybe they're adding more. 221 losing side, short match relative to what you would get on 
Galactic Assault. Um, I'll have to look and see what Galactic Assault's rewards are, though. See, not showing up again, so let's go find out. Um, Galactic Assault is the one that uh, I'm more familiar with, so if we can see like a full round of match of uh, Galactic Assault that goes into the last phase and see what its credit reward is, I'd be able to say for sure whether or not they're actually... They've already implemented that change to the rewards, or if it's coming um, with the next patch. Because this game shouldn't need much patches. It should mostly be server-based updates. And every once in a while, an update for the actual client on the system. We'll see. As I'm coughing here. <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's see. If I go to career and go to Last Jedi... Okay, it is counting. It's just not showing those. So unlike the timed challenges that used to show up on your on your results screen, um, apparently the faction challenges, the Last Jedi challenges, do not. Great. Three. That sucks. So apparently defeat is definitely meaning um, kill. Kill assist apparently does not count. Play five rounds of blast. Three to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three to go. Fine, whatever. I guess I could stand to do specialist instead of uh, officer. Because I definitely need uh, those uh, infiltration kills. And I could just use infiltration a few times and see if I can kill anybody. Again, unlikely. Not a fan of Blast, but hey. I did see the, uh... <coughs> I've watched them, but I've watched them on the computer. I haven't watched them all on the, uh... Blu-ray copies I have of them yet. Um, and did I see the Senator Theater's last night video in 2010 where they showed A New Hope? I couldn't tell you. I'll tell you what I do like to watch, um, and I've watched a couple of times. I like the, uh, and I know it's not fully original, where you had the people who took uh, recorders into the theater and and recorded the audio of people's reactions to A New Hope, and they took that and then just matched it back up with a video from, say, a, a scanned, you know, uh, VHS or DVD or VHS or whatever. Um, so you can actually hear the way that people reacted back in 77. That kind of thing I find really cool. Like the crowd reaction stuff. I'm not as big a fan of just like the regular trailer reaction video type things, which is why I've only done the one. Because most of the time it's not a genuine reaction. It's someone vamping basically to try to get, you know, views and likes and shares and stuff like that. And it's just, to me, that's disingenuous. Rebel gorillas all over the forest. Rebel gorillas? Is this planet of the freaking apes? Rebels together strong. Oh, there they are. Don't have to go nearly as far to find the bad guys in Blast. Duh, Nathan. Don't be a moron. Night-night. So you still do get at least a, a bigger bang for your buck out of your... Uh, sniper rifles than you do the S5 with the officer, so it's not totally taking away. I'm eager to get that last sniper rifle, though, because this sniper rifle's pretty badass, but the last sniper rifle you can unlock? Holy crap. Its damage meter is all the way up to maximum. This one is about 80% of maximum or something like that. It's pretty far, but pretty sweet. Although it does look a lot like just a regular sniper rifle. It doesn't look very Star Wars-y. Roll with it. Uh oh Being shut. Ah, there we go. Holy crap. There we go, there's that no uh no overheat mode. There you go. See, I'm better when I'm playing at distance with the specialist. 
I would not have expected that because I tend, I initially thought heavy would be my class of choice, but I'm starting to think specialist is going to be um, whenever I get past all the stuff. Oh, holy balls! Because they have an infiltration. When you turn on infiltration, you don't show up on their radars. Wait a second. That must be somebody else's shield, because the officer can't drop a shield and a turret, because the shield takes up your turret space. Get out the way! Get out the way! Go, 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 go! You're gonna die. Yep. What do I have as my cards here? Killstreak Infiltration, Expert Weapons Handling, and Stealth. Stinger. Proved. Trip mine. Might as well get the trip mine because I'm not really using this. Oh, actually, no. No. Nope. 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 I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Let's go back to here. Okay. I wasn't using my, uh, my macro binoculars to do scouting. I found that when I was doing, uh, going for kills with the sniper rifle, that was a big help. Right? You can see where they're coming from. Only downside is you can't combine them. Good night! Unfortunately, at this distance, it takes about three shots to hit most people. Ah, shit! She saw me! Oh, and now she's coming over here. With the rocket launcher. I didn't have a chance in hell on that one. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I should probably stop with that. Knowing YouTube, the fact that I'm mumbling to myself the Mission Impossible theme will wind up causing a copyright strike because screw everybody. Shit. Hey, go away. Whoa, whoa. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, where'd I get hit from? Oh, behind me. It's that same rocket trooper. That rocket trooper is, is spotting me from across the map and then flying behind me and coming at me. What'd I ever do to you? Go kill... I don't know. Go after Kevin Spacey or Harvey Weinstein or something or Matt Lauer. Leave me the hell alone. Yeah, the film prints over time will tend to, to, to go pinkish on you. And, it, well, this whole area is basically clear. Not sure where it's getting that one from. Huh, okay, well. It's telling me there's one over there. Ah, there they are, okay. Holy shit! Okay, I did not expect to have to go that far, <laughs> that far this way to go around, and apparently I can't even go around. So, fun shit. Jamming. Oh, whoop! Wrong one. Oh, you are just sitting there so that you. Oh, I was gonna say that guy was basically just sitting there so that they could uh. Probably get the participation in blast, weren't they? Rebel scum. I will eventually. Obviously, can't do it right now. Ah, I see your robo anus. 
I know, it's not that funny, but you're all, I'm also part of the married couple that anytime we see uh, Law & Order SVU, it's, you know, you know, in New York City, sexually based defenses are considered especially heinous. The immediate response from either me or my wife or both is, HE SAID ANUS! Because it just became like one of those ongoing gags. Probably the least appropriate television show to make that joke with. Actually. And yet... It happens. Where are you at, you... You! Freaking gorilla! They said... They said freaking gorillas! Rebel gorillas? Does that mean Wookiees? Is that racist? No, they meant rebel gorillas. Spelled differently. Bye bye, Officer Dead Man. Give it a second, and his turret will explode and not be able to come at me. Uh oh! They're brutalizing us. Yeah, but Eric, if they did that, they wouldn't have been able to do the whole we're gonna like or supposedly do the whole we're gonna show you something that spans generations when it turns out that it, you know, didn't. I'm betting they just didn't because they were concerned about how how little they were allowed to actually show of anything about Kylo Ren's backstory. Probably. But at least you get to play as Kylo in the last mission. Kind of. When you go all Inception on it. I was expecting there to be like a top spinning at the end of the sequence there. Oh, they're all running around that way, it seems like. Scatter into the forest. Not that it matters. Don't let them track you. Yay, three down, two to go. I don't have to keep playing blast. Yay. Guy making a Star Wars restoration who had, who was pretty crappy against fan films. It's kind of ironic, given the fact that they're both fan projects that are video based and are just as unlicensed as each other. Unsalted versus special editions. I'm assuming that's unaltered and autocorrect. Gotcha. Uh, although. Honestly, if it was a choice between unsalted or special editions, I would go with special editions because I love salt. Love salt in my fries. So, you know, in fact, whenever I eat fries, I squirt the ketchup and pour the salt directly into the ketchup. Which apparently people think is weird. My wife thought it was weird. But I just find it very efficient. Uh, but yeah, I tend to go, I mean, I tend to prefer unaltered, but when it comes to actually watching them, since I'm tending to watch the official releases, I'll put in the Blu-rays usually, which are the even more special editions, right? Because, you know, 97 is a special edition, 2004 is the more special edition, so then 2011 has to be the even more special edition. Um, I mean, it's the, it's the one that's got the best visual and uh, audio quality of the official ones. I never do bother to play as the Enforcer or... Uh, Aerial Troopers. I probably should. I mean, I've got some decent cards for them. But I'm spending so much time working on the milestones for the others, it never even really pops into my head. Interesting. Pick your targets and take down as many as you can. Oh shit! I forgot when you play on Kashyyyk and it's on blast, it's up in the air. <laughs> I wily coyote myself. It's too bad there's not a milestone for being the first death in a match as opposed to the first we're getting the first ground. kill. We're losing ground. Is that a pun? There's not a lot of ground to be found on this map. Was that a pun? Dang it, I did it again. I keep wanting to turn on my macro binoculars, and I'm using um, 
instead of doing what I'm supposed to do and going uh and and hitting a uh, R1, I'm hitting R1 and L1 at the same time and it's activating infiltration instead. Which worked out fine because I need the infiltration kills and I just got one, but that's not what I'm actually trying to do. I think Aiden's alright, but I think Aiden is someone who really has to grow on you by reading Inferno Squad. You know? Kind of like the, the emotional part of the ending. I mean, the ending of the uh, the campaign, the convert, the... What the... F uh... The interaction that happens between Aiden and her father at the end of, well, the second to last chapter of the campaign during the Battle of Jakku has virtually no emotional build-up or rationale in the game itself. You have to actually know Garrick Versio a little bit from uh, uh, the novel to really feel as though anything that he does at the end of the game is at all rational for the character's development. I mean, I'm fine with the idea of building characters through a uh, a novel or building characters through a game. But you shouldn't have to read the novel to enjoy the game or understand the game or vice versa. And in this case, or versio, vice versio. <laughs> but in this case, you do. Uh, definitely what I call a Stover effect, where reading, a ma reading material from one particular... Um, Spin-off item or adaptation helps you enjoy the source material or material it was meant to promote uh, more. Named for Matthew Stover's uh, Revenge of the Sith novelization that completely changed the way that I looked at Revenge of the Sith compared to my friends when I when I saw it uh, for the first time after reading the novelization. Enemy locking. Uh, never listen to it. Most of the time I don't read the, I don't listen to the audiobooks. I'll listen to the audio dramas that are actual new content or an audio dramatization of existing content, but I generally don't listen to regular audiobooks um, for Star Wars. I tend to like to just read them because I need to take notes for the Star Wars Timeline Gold as I'm doing it. The most con comprehensive Star Wars chronology available anywhere, by the way, at over 1100, or 1100, 3100 pages in the 20th anniversary edition that came out in October. Um, which means that as I'm reading the book, I need to be able to put, like, post-it notes and stuff in it, so I can't do that with an audiobook. Um, I listen to, generally if I'm listening to an audiobook, it's a non-fiction of some kind, either history or more likely politics. Like, I just started re-listening to Patriot's History of the United States recently, and I'm not even to the point where the U.S. exists yet. It's like a 50-hour audiobook. Somebody's coming up from behind. They came from behind. God dang it. Didn't get the kill with the, whatchamacallit. Oh, that's kind of cool. The color scheme here for Kashyyyk, right? Kind of the greenish. It was gray on, uh, where were we just now? Indoor? Sorry, I had to channel my mic, my uh, Eric Cartman there for a second. Whoa! Grenade, make way! Grenade! Ah, damn it! I did it again. I was trying to use the freaking macro binoculars, and I hit the infiltration button. Gotta stop doing that shit. Uh oh, somebody's coming in from this door. Oh, oh, shot you in your droid nads. Battle droids got nards. I'm gonna stick with you guys just so that, like, maybe one of you guys will get killed instead of me. Because obviously none of you are yellow, so I'm not gonna get bonus score.
kill assist again. That's good, I guess. Don't care, but I guess. Oh, let's see. I don't actually ever use Spotify, so I could not say. I don't tend to listen to... Like, unless I'm in the car, I don't tend to listen to music very often. Like, just music. And in the car, I usually have a like a, a full library of a particular artist and just have it all in an mp3 cd to play in the car more on the car i'm sure in a second i can show you something very sad oh dead um you can't listen to certain tracks anymore why All right, so you're saying some can't be played because they aren't part because they were part of like an extended soundtrack, not that they are on the original, and then it disappeared. Well, something's been going on with some with uh some of the John Williams music and the way that it's the way that it's listed on a uh, um uh, in the YouTube auto check copyright violation thing because the other day I started getting a ton of copyright flags on my uh, Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens Let's Plays from like a year ago um, that were all for an unnamed track of just a crap ton of John Williams music like somebody just took a bunch of John Williams mu music threw it into one um, track put it up and used that as a uh copyright flagger track which is kind of boy, we have taken the advantage. Oh man I should have shot the Wookiee or whatever that was down. whoa ho, ho, ho. let's go let's let's walk only in the direction that actually has ground awesome Dude, somebody's gonna be in the room next to you. You're about to die. Hello, Leonardo. Welcome. So far, so good. Don't get too confident yet. Leonardo of one of the coolest last names of of anyone I've seen in the stream since this podcast start or the live stream series started. Delacroix. Very uh, cool sounding as opposed to Butler, which is just like which unfortunately, apparently, Butler is still uh, is still a word that many people can't figure out how to spell, which is mind-boggling. But you know, the entire soundtrack played live in concert. Cool. I like the um, like I never saw the uh, Star Wars in concert thing, um, but I loved the bonus DVD that came with the sound, the original release of the soundtrack for Revenge of the Sith, where it's basically like. Just the way they did, you know, the music video for Duel of the Fates or the music video for Across the Stars or whatever. Um, they had ones for most of the major themes, and you could watch them in chronological order with the introductions by a... Um, shoot, who was it that did that one? Uh, Palpatine! Ian McDiarmid. There you go. I was about to say Ian Abercrombie. I'm like, no, it was not Ian Abercrombie. That was him later. And how many is that? Is that four? Do I have one more to do? I think. Maybe. I don't know because I don't effing tell us. There you go. Stay true. Where am I on stay true? That's the one I've been working on and it sucks. 15 out of 40. Okay, so 25 more to go. That and the Vanguard one for uh, assault are just pains in that. At least the main one for the heavy is you just have to kill with impact grenades. That's not as bad. That Vanguard one's killing me. Nope, not officer. Specialist. Specialist. How do you know you're a specialist? Your limbs are about as thin as the barrel of your blaster. 
And jail, I honestly don't know. It's like 646. Nothing happening in the system that I'm monitoring at this point. So, kind of meh right now. Um, until I feel like I need a break, probably. And then I'll probably actually jump back on again if I'm going to play any more of this. Although, I've got a hankering to play some more Doom VFR or regular Doom um, that I just started last night. Which wouldn't be on stream, but, you know, for a while at least, I guess. Depends at the beginning, it depends on how I'm feeling, but I'm not feeling as bad as I was earlier today. So. Uh, oh, yeah, so I was going to show you something for something that's very sad. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's try not to die, and I can show them something sad. Uh, for those of you who know, and, I'll, and uh, hey, CK and Rusty. Um. Let's see, so, uh, yeah, so the sad thing is, I had to go get my license plate today. The car is officially dead. The car is officially totaled after my wreck a couple of weeks ago. They finally got an estimate, and the estimate was uh, more than the value of the vehicle, even though in Georgia it only has to be at least 75% the value of the vehicle to be considered totaled, and yeah, it's totaled. So now we're waiting on paperwork so they can send me a big old check. And I can go get a car. I will probably get the same type of car, just a newer model. And depending on what's available, I'll probably wind up with at least a... That was dumb. At least a little bit of um, payments, but not much. Because if I'm going to get a new one, I want to have all the features that I want instead of wanting them later, like I did um, years ago. Uh, would I like to see... How do I like to see group, troop customization done? I mean, it needs to be something that's... Um, I'm assuming you're talking about when microtransactions come back. Um, just something cosmetic only, right? So different types um, of troopers seen in the films, maybe different phases of the armor, maybe give you some of the Rex style um, of helmet where it's sort of a cross between the two, stuff like that. Though you can't really do much with that in the uh, Imperial era unless you're going to start to get beyond what's canonically available as if that really should matter, but that's their bullshit excuse for not doing it before. You know, can't have a pick Vader and all that crap. Um, and CK, um, it's, I, I think Leonardo said it well. I mean, it's, EA made some pretty dumbass moves when it came to the microtransactions, uh, the initial costs of heroes. Um, I would argue that their dumbass move with the microtransactions, however, was not to include them. It was the way they included them. Um, because we're in a position now, and you can hear more detail on it at the uh, in Cloud City Casino. But let's take the example of... Uh, I'll use the same example I used on Cloud City Casino. Let's say that I am someone who has a hot dog stand. And uh, I pride myself, and my business model is that I provide hot dog meals... Uh, so for like, I don't know, three bucks or whatever, um, come to my stand and you'll get a hot dog, but it's just kind of a regular hot dog, so it's a little bit of beef, a little bit of pork, a little bit of chicken. You really don't want to ask what kind of meat it all is because who the hell knows. Um, but you get yourself uh, that and you'll get a couple little packs of uh, generic ketchup and mustard, but that's all as far as condiments go. And then uh, you'll get a little generic bag of regular potato chips and uh, some store brand uh, options on different types of soft drinks like Dr. K from Kroger or that sort of thing. Um, and that's working well for me so far. That gives me a good uh, enough of a profit to keep the business running and it covers my costs, no problem, for about three bucks each. But times change and over time people's tastes and expectations when it comes to uh, hot dogs and hot dog meals have changed. So now, in order to keep my business and meet those expectations, I have to up my game. So, if, oh, I forgot. Not a clone. Um, so to up my game, then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to switch to uh, all beef hot dogs, 100% beef hot dogs, so you know what you're getting. Um, I am providing not just uh, packets of ketchup and mustard. Now they are not not uh, generic. Now they are brand name, like you know Heinz or whatever. Um, I'm also uh, providing little packets of relish and some freshly diced onions, if you would like, for your hot dogs. And I'll provide you with, let's say, um, brand name options for sodas now instead of store brand and for chips. Um, not only brand named options, but more than just regular, bland, simple potato chips. Um, I have upped my game. My product is better. It is now meeting expectations. But turns out that the community at large uh, 
does not see that added value as worth actually paying any more for. The demand and supply and whatnot aren't really uh, working out the way that they should. Um, so it turns out that people still expect to only pay three bucks for a hot dog meal, and if it's more than that, they'll say, screw it and go buy a burger or something, and yet my costs have just gone through the frickin' roof because I've upped my game and made a better, more costly product. It costs me more to produce. I can't charge any more for it. Therefore, I'm losing money, essentially. Um, or perhaps even in the red for every time I produce a hot dog. That's basically what has happened in, the, in gaming. Um, the price point for a standard game, including a AAA game for a standard release, has been $60 since the beginning of the PS3 and Xbox 360 era. Um, the expectations for games and the price of producing a game have risen, ex well, I would say exponentially, geometrically at least, since then. So we are now at a point where we expect ongoing support for a game after release. We expect more content being added in many cases and bug fixes with constant patches and such. We expect multiplayer servers to be on for years after a game's release. Um, and we expect the graphics, the voice work, the music work, um, basically everything about the game to be higher quality than we expected it to be back in the PS3 era. We want our gourmet souped up hot dogs, but we don't want to pay for it. Because if anytime somebody talks about raising the prices of a base video game from 60 bucks, people go ape shit. Because right now the market can barely bear 60 bucks at times, depending on the game. Um, there are people who still think 60 bucks rip off. Um, so, you have to get the money from somewhere, right? Um, and originally it was, well, we'll do paid DLC, a mixture of things that actually do raise our costs substantially, um, like making new levels of games, but then also some stuff that generally is not going to cost us as much to produce, like alternate skins on the same character models, or just alternate color palette swaps, where we don't even have to really remodel it, we just change the colors. Um, in which case... Um, if you do that, um, that's a way to bring in money. But that became heavily demonized. Um, and you ran into situations where people expected DLC for a long period, even though the drop-off rate for people actually saying, screw it, I'm done playing this game, I'm not going to buy the later DLC, even if I bought the earliest ones, was pretty huge. So what did they do? They go to season passes. That will get them the money that they need, and what then that accounts for, or takes into account people who would then normally have bought maybe the first and second DLC out of four and not bought the third and fourth because they're done playing the game, um, and has them buy all four of them up front, so whether they drop off or not, the money is still already into the company. But that got demonized, because as cost rose for that, Costs of season passes rose, and people, again, went apeshit. So the, they turned to a, the newest solution is they turned to a microtransaction model of in-game optional purchases um, in smaller increments at a time, uh, like they use for mobile games. Um, and in mobile games, it works, and people don't gripe as much because it's, they're usually for free-to-play games. Um, and because it's just a different model, um, you have people now going ape shit over microtransactions. Um, and sometimes it's completely innocuous, like it's just cosmetic. And if it's just cosmetic, who cares? Buy it, don't buy it, who gives a damn? It, it's a way for them to make money. Okay, fine. You don't want them doing nothing but paid mission DLC or something, or map DLC? You want them to focus on cosmetics? Go for it. It doesn't affect gameplay. The problem with the recent tr controversies with this game and with um, uh, Shadow of War, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War, is that in both cases, you're talking about a pay-to-win type scenario. You're talking about microtransactions that are not cosmetic only, that actually do affect game progression. Um, in this case, you buy the crystals, you can get crates faster. That won't do anything to help you increase your rank as far as the level of your account as you work your way up to 50. Um, so there are some cards you won't be able to craft early on, but one of the other requirements for crafting is having a certain level of cards for a particular class, and that all is determined by the number of tick marks you have at the top of all the cards you have for that character. More crystals means more crates, means more cards, and crafting parts means faster progression that way, and that half of the progression system, I would say two-thirds, I guess, of the pro progression system, um, becomes pay to win. Uh, whether it was intended that way or not. With Shadow of War, 
you get to the end of the third act and basically you've completed the entire story of the game and the fourth act is nothing but a grind fest of the same crap over and over again for which you need legendary um, uh, characters, legendary orcs to fight in your army. And what's the easiest way to get a legendary? Well, buy them, of course, through a microtransaction. Um, and you don't actually get the real cutscene that ends the movie, or ends the movie, ends the game, um, until you finish that fourth chunk, that, uh, that grindy, loot box laden fourth part, which is why a lot of people, including me, you're gonna play through the end of the third act, get to the end of the main story, say screw it to the grind fest, and just watch the, um, cutscene online. Oop, I almost forgot, I need to go back and see, I think that was all the blasts that I needed. Um... So yeah, and we'll see, and CK, I would say that you're sort of right on a season pass is a way to go because at least you know what you're getting, but actually you don't, right? Most games for a season pass will tell you, you get all of a year's DLC. You have no idea if that DLC is going to include single player content, multiplayer content, maps, ships, characters. You look at what happened with Battlefront. I and mean, we knew we'd get, you know, the original Battlefront, maps, ships, characters, and stuff like that. We had no idea what was coming with each until right before it was launched. Um, there were people clamoring all the way through, expecting to get some type of new single-player DLC as part of a paid um, uh, season pass. Uh, we just don't have that kind of control. Like, you look at, um, I think it's Shadow of War. All that Shadow of War says with the season pass is, um, or with the gold edition, which is what I bought, whatever it's called, the expanded bigger edition, is you'll get two story DLCs and two multiplayer DLCs. But it tells you nothing about what's going to be in them. Because um, half the time, they don't even know at that point as they're developing it. Um, I mean, I think Season Pass is something that um, is probably the lesser of evils if the, pay, the, the microtransactions are going to be progression-based. But if they're not progression-based, I would argue that it's the other way around, that your Season Pass is, or is not going to be quite as a innocuous as a whatchamacallit, as a microtransactions would be. Um, but you would need microtransactions more like what they do with Eve Valkyrie. Like in Eve Valkyrie, there are tons of microtransactions you could do. I spent like 50 bucks on microtransactions just to try it um, for Eve Valkyrie. But it's all like decals for your ships, color schemes for your ships, um, different helmets you can have for your pilot, different outfits for the pilot, stuff like that. None of it affects progression whatsoever. Go that way, you know. But yeah, we did a whole thing about this on the most recent Cloud City Casino, or the second most recent if he's put out our newest one. Um, we just recorded about the story of Battlefront 2, but I don't know if Michael's had time to actually edit it and put it out. We don't tend to have to edit very much. And hey, I, I made sure that I didn't say fuck at all when we recorded most recently, so he doesn't have to censor me at all in the episode. Um, so hopefully it's a fast edit, but I'm not sure if it's out yet. But yeah, being the econ teacher, a lot of the stuff relating to the business side of games um, intrigues me, interests me. But at the same time, it is so poorly understood by the community at large that I don't know how we have a an honest debate on it. It's kind of like in politics, right? The whole argument over the individual mandate that if the uh, Republican tax plan from the Senate gets through the House and then to the president's desk and gets signed uh, and becomes law the individual mandate for Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, would be gone. Well, the individual mandate is what says you have to purchase health insurance. And the Democratic response to this is, if that passes, X million Americans will lose their health insurance. Well, no. No, if they remove, if they remove like, the Medicare expansion, that many people would lose their health care. Um, but if you're basically saying that if we tell people you no longer are forced to buy something and they choose not to buy it, that's not losing a damn thing. That's making a choice. But that's how the rhetoric goes. How do you have an honest debate about health care, whether it's a smart idea when you're given the choice to not buy health care to actually not buy it? Because that's kind of a dumbass move to do. Um, how do you have an honest debate about that when you have intellectually dishonest terminology being used constantly? Um, or con conflation of terms in the abortion debate on both sides and stuff like that. I mean, at some point, we got to be able to have an educated, detailed, intellectually honest conversation about stuff. But the internet makes it much more easy to just fling poo 
and do your monk do like not your but do monkey hoots do like a person's monkey hoots than actually try to have a civil conversation and people get offended usually when you try to have a civil conversation oh shit I actually wonder I didn't even think about this at this point but it's like evening now eastern time so the bakery case got argued today uh, masterpiece bakery case so I wonder how that went I'm assuming they're not going to issue their ruling until later which is usually the way SCOTUS uh, Supreme Court works but yeah the masterpiece bakery case um, the one that puts basically non-discrimination laws for LGBT community and uh, uh, free exercise of religion uh, for business owners into direct conflict um, finally made it to the Supreme Court today I really am kind of curious how that turned out or how that will turn out um, the travel ban, or the Muslim ban, travel ban, um, got as far as the Supreme Court for at least an initial act, um, yesterday. So, uh, Supreme Court 7 to 2 said, yes, it's lawful, um, at least it's lawful on its face, at, at least on the question they were being asked to decide right then, which is basically just, um, does the president have the power to create that kind of law? Answer, yes. Of, or that kind of executive order answer is yes. It's clearly stated in the statute that he can, um, without actually addressing is it a Muslim ban or not, is it discriminatory or not. Um, so it goes into effect on Monday for five mo majority Muslim countries plus North Korea and Venezuela, which are decidedly not majority Muslim countries. Um, and then uh, as cases continue making it through the court on that issue from the lower courts, eventually the bigger issue um, of is it discriminatory will come before the Supreme Court, but just hasn't yet. I love following that kind of stuff. That's my bread and butter. And being in the South, I have to say it like that, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm contractually obligated by uh, having bought a house in the South that I have to say bread and butter instead of butter. Yeah, bread and butter. I guess if I lived in in some areas of the Atlanta area, though, it'd have to be like like it's my bread and hummus. Hummus isn't bad, by the way, and if it's on the right stuff. But I can't imagine eating that crap every day. I mean, if I wanted already chewed corn and snot mixed together, I I could make it much more cheaply than uh than buying hummus. Yeah. Butter gets me, but that's because I'm lactose intolerant. So, for me, it's all margarine, right? I can't believe it's not butter, as Fabio once said. Is Fabio even around anymore? Does anybody know who Fabio is anymore? I may be making references to celebrities that everybody's like, who the hell is that? It's Fabio! It's a guy that looks like a super muscled, supermodel version of Michael Bolton. Who is Michael Bolton? Damn it! You know? We explain one cultural reference with another. Oh, headshot. Ouch. Get out of my way with your legs! Yeah, it was interesting because when I was in college, you had to take a mandatory biology class, but, like, nobody wanted to be there because it wasn't the science major biology class. It was the, you're majoring in something else, but you have to take a science. Here's biology. We, don't, we know you don't want to be here, class. And, uh... As a result, the uh, the professor was basically like, what do you guys want to learn about this semester? And we basically came up with a list of topics. So instead of starting at the basis, we started with genetics. Um, so one of the things that we did was uh, during the course of the semester uh, in that unit, he explained, the professor explained in detail how lactose intolerance works, why the pills that are used for it usually work, and that sort of thing. And that's something I've never forgotten. I've forgotten almost everything else from that biology class, but the lactose intolerance stuff has stayed with me uh, all these years. Fall back! Fall back! <sighs> okay, guys. It's okay. We'll be fine. I mean, surely they're not going to come in here and try and kill us, right? Oh god, it's on my mini-map! They are coming in here to try to kill us! No! Oh shit! It's Ray! I'm dead! Whatever you need. 
I took in an, an inter intercultural communication or an intercultural relations or whatever it was called at the time kind of class. I want to say that was in high school, though, instead of college, I think. Because in college, I was a uh, education, I was a social studies education major, so most of my stuff was uh, either social studies or education. But that meant that I took, like, big-time sociology as opposed to taking, um, like, just culture relations type stuff. So it had a little more theory to it than uh, practicality. So a little bit more like what you would wind up actually teaching in most school systems. Dang it. Let's just get rid of that turret up there. Okay. Top resistance agent spotted. Be warned. Good luck, turret. Oh, crap. Being shot at. Being shot at. Being shot at. Where am I being shot from? I don't even know. Uh-oh. Damn it, Ray. Human biology. Never took human biology, but my sister took a ton of different human anatomy courses. But she's a nurse, uh, an R in, and going for some other kind of certification. My wife did it too. She's doing a. Med she has like medical assisting and and uh, medical billing and coding, um, but isn't able to get a position in either of those departments yet at the hospital she works at. So right now she's in the uh, dietary and nutrition department and wants to get the hell out of there. I hear a lightsaber. Is that Ray again? Yep. I heard Ray's voice. I heard Ray's voice say, George! Yeah, yeah. That wasn't Ray Charles, was it? Who was that? That Louis Armstrong, maybe? I don't freaking know. It took me years of my childhood to realize that Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder were different people, so just, you know, whatever. Oh, there was something recently. I forget what it was. There was some song that I hadn't ever realized was Stevie Wonder. And then when I realized it was originally Stevie Wonder, I was like, holy crap. It was something there had been a remake for, and the remake was more popular than the original. What are you doing, guy? Go this way. Um, so I don't remember. We had a communications course we had to do, but I forget what it was called. I think it was called Intro to Communications or something. It was like you had to do... Um, uh, X number of credits, you know, in different departments um, as just sort of general ed requirements. So a lot of those I got out of the way the first two years, first year and a half, so I could then focus on my major throughout. So then I had years where it was almost entirely like history and economics classes and stuff like that. One class was basically like a history of economics. It was like historical scenarios as it progressed through econ uh, economic means, which was interesting. If you're an econ nerd like me, it was interesting. Otherwise, it would have been a snore fest. But that's why it was mostly majors in there. Kylo! Okay, Kylo Ren runs fast, but runs funny. Am I the only one who thinks he runs kind of weird? So the gate controls are insecure? The gate controls are like, I don't know, does this make me look fat? Does this make me look like I'm like a communications control instead of a gate control? You can tell me. I would have loved to have done a film history class, but it wasn't one of the options. You had to take something that was actually related to your specific area. So either U.S. history, world history, um, or if you were really narrowing it down as a history major instead of a uh, education major so that you had uh, none of the education classes and a few more history classes, you would have like a World War II history, that kind of thing. Um, I also took a uh, history of the Vietnam War that was taught by a communist, so that was interesting. I mean, like, not like somebody who acted like a communist. Dude was a straight-up avowed communist and told us that on the way in there. His basic, his basic premise was, America is always wrong. Screw America. Now learn my curriculum or fail. I'm like, all right, awesome.
And yeah, I didn't kill him. Okay, and all right, let's see the amounts. So that was Galactic Assault. It got to the second stage of it. Second stage? No, third stage of it, 291. See, I'm not seeing that as a credit boost. You know? I mean, they said that they're boosting it, but I'm certainly not seeing it here. Because usually you would end with something in like the 290s to the 390s range for the third round of it. At least I usually do. And that's with a mediocre score. So, I don't know. Maybe they're implementing that on Tuesday, or maybe I'm just... Uh, as the song goes, maybe I'm just blind. And now I've got three doors down stuck in my head. <sighs> oh. Alright. And hello. And specialist. Ah. All right, so this is another one at Star Killer Base because that's the only one that has the uh, stolen LIUV. The Liub. That's the only card. Yeah, it's the only card I've got for this one, for speeders. Yeah, speeders, artillery, and uh, I forget what the other one's called. Armor, I think. For your um, vehicle support types. All the shows. With you. Many shows. Not sure it's all the shows, but I also don't know which shows you're referring to. Well, know the job. You but yeah, right? Christmas Don't season is always time for hiatus. That gives us distraction so we can free our people. Everyone the order's locked away in this monster. Like, if a show is about to go on hiatus and it's just because of, you know, normal time and they're being nice to you, you call it a hiatus, but, uh, if it turns out that they're about to go on hiatus and they, uh, they hate people asking about it, then, and they want you to shove it up your ass, then they might be calling and going on a hiatus. Ah! Long way to go for a bad joke, but hey. That's what they do here. Oh! Pop your head back up again, bro. Come on. Ah! Okay, so I got killed, but at least I got a kill. So that's more kills toward my uh officer class. Or not officer. Yeah. Why did I choose officer? I need to go back to specialist and break out my uh infiltration. Durr. Work on those milestones. I'm gonna reach a point where I don't have the foggiest freaking clue how many I've killed for that uh, last Jedi thing with uh, each class. And I'm gonna have to just do guesswork. Hello! Hello, it's time for a healthy breakfast. Don't worry, your kids will eat it. Is that Kix? A cereal with whole grain oats. Don't worry, your kids won't hide from it. Isn't that Kix? Hey guys, I actually tell you what, let me help y'all bros out here. Let me help you out here. And, uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Alright. That's the whole reason why I wanted to finish up that, uh, turret, uh, and disruption requirement for the milestones, because then I could have the officer with the, uh, the shield and use it for the objective based modes, which I much prefer to blast. Oh, come back! Come back! Come back! Baby, come back! Ah, oh, dang it, he came back, but he came back too fast. Go! Oh. Classical theater? My favorite Land Before Time movie would be either none of them or the first one, because I've only ever seen the first one, but I remember virtually nothing about it. Except for the fact that at Pizza Hut, you could get uh, little hand puppets, and I had one of the little green dude. Did that guy just tell me to watch out? Whoa, wait a second. How'd I get it? How did I get a kill? Oh, I guess I got a kill assist from my grenade, maybe? 
I don't get the fact that your flash grenade can actually kill someone. You would think that in the galaxy far, far away, they would have perfected flash grenades to the point where they're basically not going to be lethal. Because they're supposed to just be there to disorient. Apparently so, though. Tell you what, I'm just gonna jump the heck up here. Well, not that way. I'm gonna get up here and I. Uh oh. There we go. I'm gonna drop a shield on this bitch. There we go. We got this. We're going on to the next stage of the battle. Oh, no, we're not because she just put enough damage into it to actually destroy it. Spike is the green dude. He's like a little baby brontosaurus or something. Whatever he is. I think. It's been a long, long, long time. I've I don't think I've ever myself. seen Secret of Nim. If I have, I don't remember anything about it. Is that the one with Fievel? Or is that American Tail? Or is that both? I know I've seen at least something with Fievel, but hell if I know what it was. Ready to go. Rat Tago. I was surprised that more people don't take this way. At least once it's down to the um, the ordinance or whatever it is, and not the turbo laser. That's weird. If I don't get up on the same level as them, I'm not seeing them in yellow. Oh, I see. Some bitch is gonna be trying to shoot from way the hell up here, huh? Oh, and I got shot. Well, I was trying to spot him to kill him. Well, now I have a goal. Oh, wow. So Secret of Nim isn't as old as I thought it was. Oh, I guess it is still kind of green with the color scheme. I didn't notice that before. I guess it's because of the lighting. It looked like it was gray. That or it's just the uh, Imperial one that's gray. Hmm. Anakin, you're breaking my heart so badly that I'm just going to say screw you and I'm going to leave our children without any parents. Because I'm just that bad a mother. I keep thinking I'm seeing the flash of a sniper up here, but I guess I'm not. That they're dead already. Going dark. Ah, dang it. And then I do something like that, which isn't even a... Wasn't what I wanted to do. Oh, can you not come down here, bitch? You know, flying right up here and trying to run people over and you're just going to be flying up here. Can you not come down? Oh, you can't come down here, can you? So what's running in my head is from uh, the toll booth thing from the old Adam Sandler, one of the original Adam Sandler uh, um, CDs, comedy CDs. You're going to die, bitch. I'm coming out of the booth. I swear. Okay, maybe not. Whatever. So I'm going to reposition myself. Speaking of reposition, if you like the uh, Imperial Assault Miniatures game, uh, with very little fanfare, they just released Legends of the Rebellion, which is an app that's free. And basically, you um, use it with your core set and whatever other sets that you have, and you tell it which sets you have so it knows what's available. And it basically runs a campaign for you. Um, and some of the stuff, and basically it's a cooperative, so anybody who's going to actually play that's a human plays it uh, cooperatively, whereas all the Imperial actions are handled by the system itself, by the app, um, including stuff like repositioning for attacking, actual attacking, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. It's really well thought out, it seems, so I can't wait to actually try it out. All right, here we go. Uh-oh! 
No, come back! Stormy, come back! You can take a bolt from me. Yeah, everybody's like, screw it! They were all like, oh my god, he's talking economics. Screw this guy. Oh my god. Uh, if I wanted my education with my video games, I'd be playing educational software. <laughs> it's a very slow falling dead body. Here, guys, have a shock. Uh oh! Oh, shoot! Oh, somebody's coming. Ah! Missed him. Well, Togo. Again, I still think that she looks like she's modeled at least partially after Jen. Uh, not Jen Urso. Um, Jan Ors. And I didn't even realize that there's a character named Jen in Imp Imperial Assault. So Jen Urso was not the first character to use a Jen name. We caught a break. Top agent arriving to help. Targeting grenade. That's what happens when you like try to hand a book of the Old Testament to a to a lady. Are you offering me a job? Nope, nope. Actually, I wasn't. Try to snipe me. I will snipe you. Oh shit! What was that? Uh oh. That's Kylo. But I still didn't die. Just kind of a shock. Cause I think that was Kylo. Woo. Han Solo, I'm captain of the Millennium Falcon. He's Han Solo. He's Han Solo. Solo. Damn it. Damaged. Damaged is not good enough. Damn it, not good enough. I really want to know the rationale for the costs of the heroes because they tend to vary between six and eight thousand uh, between maps with seemingly no rhyme or reason. I'm assuming they did balance testing on it or something. And on some of the maps, want to make certain characters less uh, affordable, but it's still weird. To me. <laughs> Didn't actually hit anybody. And nothing. Okay, awesome. I'll go around this way. Uh oh! Kylo Ren's mad because the hotel screwed up his wake up call. It's long past the time I was called. There we go. Uh oh! Mother. Oh, doesn't matter. Say Kylo Ridge is coming at me. And, are coming. Run! and now everybody has cancer. And so Dakar was attacked that day, and many in the resistance died. But a worse fate rested for those who survived the battle, for they walked away with cancer. speed. Me. Me. Hey, just 38 more kills to get the gun that I already have. Awesome. Although that's the gun that I use most during the campaign. I gotta remember to turn on the infiltration thing. If I'm gonna play with the specials, I've gotta do the infiltration thing. I've gotta get more of those freaking kills. 25 more or whatever it is. I don't even think about it while I'm playing as I only hit it by accident, usually. Come on! Five. Four. 
I've seen that go five, four, three, two, one, zero a minute thirty seconds before, which is a little bit weird. Not in a minute and thirty seconds, but five, four, three, two, one, zero minute thirty seconds, minute twenty nine, minute twenty eight, and so on. What is the other sniper rifle? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. This sniper rifle is pretty awesome from a power perspective because it's way up there. But this one's even further, except its rate of fire is slightly less, um, and its cooling power is slightly less, even though its range is pretty far, and really, the range on this one is really pretty good. Um, so yeah, I tend to prefer, instead of the DLT-19X or the uh, A280 CFE, I tend, for the Specialist, I tend to prefer the second one. Um, but for uh, the campaign, I tended to Attention prefer troops. the CFE, a little the more Rebel versatile. Banks on um, official, I chose Resistance. Lord Vader wants them seized immediately. Most of the rebels because I wanted to play as the good guys, but there's also a part of me that uh, thinks that It'll be mildly remusing, uh, remu remusing, whatever the hell remusing is. I guess that's when you're like, you're amused, but then it happens again, so you're remused. Um, but uh, I, for some reason, I guess what popped into my head was, Though we die, la resistance lives on. From uh, South Park, bigger, longer, uncut. Oh, shit, I didn't see you. They may chop your dick in half and serve it to a pig. And though it hurts you, cry and dance a dickless jig. And when you all get shot and cannot carry on, though we die, la resistance lives on. See, now I'm going to have to go and watch that. Or at least break out my soundtrack to it. Years ago, I did a big marathon and caught completely up on a South Park. So now my wife and I are watching it. And it is way too close to home. Now, I mean, it is on freaking point. <laughs> you want to talk political satire that can get away with it and is really, uh, and should be pissing off people all over the place. South Park has hit that point. Come on, roll out of the way, stupid. It's like rolling backwards and the city's rolling into a crate. Resecure and plant new charges. Plant new charges. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, I hate the shot grenade. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. At least it's not as crappy as the disruption ability for the officer. That you have to get X number of disruptions. It took me what felt like forever. Is that disruption? It just, it's not. It, the, the effect doesn't linger long enough and you have to get assist kills not actual kills with it which sucks finally finished that the other day and i plan to never use disruption again unless i have to for a milestone otherwise screw the disruption ability kind of like the shot grenade i feel the shot grenade is kind of useless damn it who the hell shoot me now know who's shooting or from where oh yeah I guess I could do this and find out where they are derp whoa hey I'm walking here I'm walking here uh oh Sniper with the exact same gun. For the Empire. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Eat turbo laser wired up. Just like it seems like you can get shot in the head with one kill shot and you're dead from a sniper rifle, but it takes like two or three kill shots from a sniper rifle to kill anybody on the other team, it seems like. Which presumably is not actually the case, but it certainly is the perception. Because you notice it more when it happens to you faster. Okay, well, I finally ran away because that side's clear. Okie day. It's their last chance to save the East Turbo Laser. Expect a rebel surge. 
it's like they the bodies of these troopers, both rebel and imperial, are made from the bot from the same stuff that the bodies of uh characters like Kanan and Ezra are in Rebels because they can apparently survive ridiculous falls and everything's okay. I uh, say, did I get the kill or did I get an assist on that? It took a little bit for that to show up. Concerned if I stand there for too long, somebody's gonna come around that corner and smoke me. So let's do a little bit of this. Hey, buddy. You had the same idea I did. Whoa! Ah! Uh. Oh no, got me from the window. I was thinking it was the guy on the ground. For the Empire. We're gonna lose! Gonna lose for the Empire. Damn, those guys are s a couple of officers, not officers, heavies. Oh, damn. Face first into that. Nice. I haven't used the gunship at all yet. I haven't even tried it, I don't think. Or if I did, it's maybe like once. I don't think I've done the U-Wing at all. And I don't think I turned on infiltration once in that match. I just don't think about it. Alright, I'll do one more match of some kind, and when that's done, take a break, and then likely come back. Holy crap! 1,351 from the match. Now, I'm assuming that's because I leveled up. Because you are supposed to now get a bonus when you level up. Um, but dang. Or rank up, whatever. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't looked at any new patch notes since that, that uh, 1.03 or 1.02. I need to, but I just haven't thought of it. Ugh. It's like, he gonna fall asleep. You be like, nah, nah. That's interesting. It looks like my wife was on an elevator that got stuck earlier. That's not good. I guess we're back on Yavin 4. U wing and ART ATRT. Six, 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 eight, six. So like on this map, why is Ray eight thousand? Everybody else is six. Is there a rhyme or reason to that, or is that just complete random BS when they actually put together the way that the maps are coded? Is Ray that much more powerful on this map than the others? Somehow? Look at the little creatures! Hey, creatures! Where you going, creatures? Hey! Hey! Can someone feed a Mogwai after midnight? Bye! Luke's first words in Last Jedi should be, Who the hell are you? To Ray. Or, uh, or you could do a call back to Back to the Future, right? They found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Run for it, Marty! Or in this case, maybe run for it, R2D2 or something. Run for it, R2! Nope. 
Must be right beneath me then. Good night. Night night. Well, that's a rebel there. Sorry. Sorry about the leg, bro. My bad. Nice. That's very cool. Is that Cold War era? Could you tell like where it was from originally? Like like what what part of the Cold War era or was it all the same tech throughout pretty much? I'm not aware of specifics of those. Alright. Oh shit! The one time I the one time I turn and go through without looking first, there's a fucking stormtrooper there. Of course. I should have turned on my friggin' infiltration before I turned the corner, but my plan was to go around and see if I could use infiltration to get down lower to some of the ones who were shooting through the middle section, but of course not. We gotta stop him, man! We gotta stop him! Downloading our stuff! Ah, shit! Oh, nope, 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 nope. Unit together. Unit together? So, like, somebody on the team has to do the little thing to make, like, a crochet thing to hook you all together? Does that mean you're calling in unit? Because Doctor Who's, um, or the Doctor's allies would probably be a help in this situation. Cool. Where was this? Like, where? what um, part of the country or world was this in? Oh, man! That's a big old kerboom! That's what we call a kerboom, yep. And I'm dead because of a DLT. Damn it, did it again. What kind of weapon you got there? It's a BLT! It shoots you and you get a craving for bacon, lettuce, tomato. Whoa! Dude had almost no health, but he got behind cover fast enough. Oh! Killed with an E11. Which is what Michael Morris swears by. He loves E11. Don't see why, but he loves E11. I'm playing Assault, I like the CR2. CR2? I'm sucking ass in this one. Not paying enough attention. I need to get over there and again, try to use that infiltration thing. Remember, Nathan, infiltration, infiltration, infiltration. If it's not infiltration, it's not helping on the milestone. Infiltration. Building in the West oh, I can't go that way. Oh, I can't go that way either. Oh, shit, I gotta go this way. Man, I can't hit for shit tonight. All destroyed. Enemies clear to land more troops. Fall back! Pay for it. And now people are clearing out the base. Fall back and regroup. We'll make a stand here, as long as we can. Rally at the camp and the turbulence ah. control. Except they falling back, back is harder than it looks because you gotta actually yourself. get out of Ready. the damn building to do it. Yeah, I'm just gonna take the death. There's no way I'm gonna get back there by the time. Yeah, not gonna happen. I'm close, not gonna happen. Digital Star Wars HD bundle poor purchase? I mean... No... As, especially as long as you bought it all together and you got the bundle price for it. I mean... It's a 
about the equivalent of having the Blu-rays. You just don't have to worry about Grenade needing out. the digital copy. And you got um, some legacy special features with it. Because it did have different special features than the, the uh, other. Alright, infiltration time, baby. And I'm not going to probably get any kills with the infiltration, so that was completely useless. But, you know, at least I remember to turn it on, so we're a step in the right direction. That's what I need. I need resourcefulness because whenever I was trying to do those turret kills with the officer, I basically used resourcefulness to give me a faster um, refresh on the ability, the turret ability that I needed to uh, keep using. Made of bulletproof grass? Yes, that's right. Bulletproof grass. I think I meant to say glass, but you know. Yeah, I mean it's not a good. I mean it's it depends on what you're looking for. Um, it's a at the time for a lot of people the question was wanting to have it downloadable. If you're in an era in which you're purchasing your HD stuff digitally so that you can stream it, then it's not a big deal. But if you're trying to archive it and actually have physical copies on hand, or physical backups on hand, then you can't. Cool. I did not know there was such a thing as siren enthusiasts, but that makes sense because it's because um, that would it would that that would have started out as um, would that have started out as military hardware or was it uh, uh, war era? civilian hardware originally like civil civil defense as opposed to military oh crap man it's the only place left to go man you're coming for us man Push him out! Push him out! Way out! <laughs> Which I guess is kind of like not just a motto for this, but it could be a motto for like a maternity ward. Push him out! Push him out! Way out! Alright, I got at least one more kill for my uh, stay true milestone with infiltration. That gun reminds me of some kind of gun that we had in the first Battlefront, but I forget what it was. But I want to say it was a regular gun. It wasn't like a power-up. But I forget what it was. It just re I'm recognizing the sound of the burst fire rate. There you go. Couple of uh, guys out there. Uh oh. Hey guys. Time for hey, what's up? Yeah! Infiltration kill, mother. Enemies running scared. Unidentified ally on site. Anybody? Anybody? Ah, crap. Nope, not gonna have enough time with infiltration to get him. So I'm gonna get the hell out of here. And probably run almost right into their heroes that I can see coming up there on the screen. But, you know, the little circular icons. Shiza! Oh, Shiza! Look sharp like Shredder. Wait, what? What do I keep walking into this gas? Um, just a, just a thought, but it's probably gas. If you're walking through and there's gas in here, it's probably probably gas. I'm just, I, it's just a thought. Oh 
Ah, there you go. Now you saw me. Man, if I had a f an explosive grenade of some kind right at that moment instead of that stupid ass shot grenade. So tell me, Rebels, if you had one shot, one opportunity, Grenade would you out. go for it or just let it slip? Ha <laughs> ha! Infiltration kill, Madre Fiete! Four to go. But they're also in the process of getting it, too, it looks like, or at least it's contested. Yeah, contested. They're all over laser control. All Tell them that no attack. means no and to get their hands off laser control's tits. Damn it. It should not be all over laser control. Are you not paying attention to the modern controversies? You're not supposed to touch laser control like that without consent. And in California, without signed consent. Or was that... New York. One of the two bigger ones. Who's gonna die in Avengers? Lots of uh, cannon fodder aliens. That is that is my bet. Lots of cannon fodder aliens will die in Avengers. For sure. That's a guarantee. Beyond that, don't know. But that one is an absolute ironclad guarantee. And there will probably be a big-ass hole that opens, like, over a city. Because that seems to happen in, you know, every superhero movie just about now. Giant boom nipple gun on Hoth. Yep. I would love it, like, seeing as how it's a, uh... The, the, all the jokes about the uh, oh, see now I was trying to do infiltration and I pressed the wrong one um, how it's the uh, you get the jokes about the shape of the ion cannon on Hoth um, there really needs to be an ad can uh, like a fake ad campaign in Star Wars for those guns and have it be something like got ion Yeah, the big bad, big bad alien, big bad guy who's not from Earth brings an army for the Avengers to, you know, fight. Kind of as a group, but usually by themselves, despite, despite the fact that they're a group. Not really. I mean, I like the Indiana Jones movies, but I'm not heavily into them. Um, in fact, I actually had the Indiana Jones, um, Young Indiana Jones, the complete series stuff where you had the three box sets, but... I, just, I have a really hard time watching Young Indiana Jones. It usually bores the crap out of me. And then regular Indiana Jones. I'm a big fan of uh, Raiders and especially Last Crusade. Not as big on Temple of Doom. And I think uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is a... It's not so much that it's a hot mess, so much as a steaming pile of dung. Which is a kind of a hot mess, but a very specific type of hot mess. Big head beetle borgs? I don't know what that is. They're coming! Get set! This was where I, I did that higher end, that third star, um first or second arcade mode uh, light side solo mission thing um, was on this map and it is a pain in the butt you gonna shoot at me boss you lizard
Super Sentai. Nope. And I just, I'm so busy looking at the chat that I'm like, bonk, smack head first into an X-Wing. And like, the rebel plays it off as like, as like, yep, uh, this X-Wing's nose is uh, perfectly solid, just like I was hoping for. Yes, that's it. Nope, shot, oh, damn. What was that? It's like he shot me and then like a jack-in-the-box shot out of my ass and launched me through the air. Hey guys, you can't go. You, I'm saying you just you can't can't go. I mean, you, I mean you can take the. It's gonna take you into an area that's gonna. Never mind. Never mind. I'll just follow you, idiots. Even though you're taking the absolute longest possible way around, but okay, whatever. Ooh, why wings? Again. Even with the paint jobs from Yavin. Yeah, sweet. Hey, you guys think maybe you could like stop working on it? There is a firefight outside. You, you, have you heard the fire? Did you hear the firefight? Huh? 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 Guy never listens to me. Your dad is an intelligent man. He's dead. Dead. D E D dead. Where's that from? D E D dead. Is that spaceballs? They got me so lost. I'm just like wandering around the freaking building now. On the plus side of not being killed, which is helping my team. I'm not actually killing anyone, so that's not helping my team. All right, let's go down and back up. That'll get us back out of here. Stop shooting me, you jerk! Uh oh! Oh, in the back of the head, or at least the back. Going dark. Going dark, only to come up top and find no enemies around at all for me to use my ability with. Awesome. Somebody got a shield. Is that Iden? Or is that just somebody using the shield ability? Grenade out. You idiots! They're running for the thingy! Oh yeah, we won. That's right. Not that it freaking matters if you win, really. We received the all clear. The imps can have you There's nothing valuable left. Han faking his death would have to assume that he knew Kylo was going to be there and could have prepared for it ahead of time when it's only a surprising moment of, oh wait, hey, there's my son walking that causes him to go into the whole Ben, 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 Ben thing um, to get him. Stay true. I'm at 19. I'm almost halfway there. Which means the next time I do it, I'm going to have to break out, um, you know, um, have to break out the Bon Jovi for a moment. All right, let's go back to the title screen. Um, let's see. All right. So it is approximately 6.56 p.m. Uh, Eastern, which is the time zone that I'm in. So I am going to cut it here. Uh, may wind up playing a little bit more, but probably off stream. Um, and give me something to eat and just kind of relax a little bit. Like I said, I've been feeling kind of meh today, uh, so I may still play, but I'll wrap things up here. As far as the stream goes, I also want to try to get the uh, Patreon-exclusive Q&A for the Nobility of the But Learniverse tier of my Patreons uh, edited and up tonight. So that'll go up on the uh, uh, on the Patreon for those who follow that, patreon.com slash Nathan P. Butler, of course. And uh, I need to still upload... It would affect the stream. Um, I need to still upload my uh, what you call it. Still upload the uh, from the Star Wars Home Video Library episode 130 about the uh, UK steel books from 2013. So uh, those will be up here in a little bit. We shall see. Um, as far as more streams, uh, definitely none on Friday. Um, 
pro let's see, what is today? Today's Tuesday. Yeah, today is Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe Thursday. Definitely not Friday. Maybe Saturday. Definitely not Sunday. So, again, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday are the uh, uh, possible ones. But uh, I'll call it here for tonight just because I'm still a little bit under the weather from how I was feeling earlier today. So I'm kind of starting to feel myself lagging just a little bit. Um, nice. Yeah, at some point I need to do more videos of what the Star Wars room looks like now because it looks a little different. It's got a few more things, but not much. But all of my books have had to be turned on their sides and changed how they're sitting. Same thing with the home videos because there's just not enough room. So, yeah, we'll see. All right, folks, I'm going to head out of here. Again, quick spiel. Uh, you can find my Star Wars Timeline Gold, the most comprehensive Star Wars chronology available anywhere at 3,100 pages in its 20th anniversary edition that just came out uh, back in October. You can find that at StarWarsFanWars.com slash timeline. You can find the two podcasts that I'm involved with, which are Star Wars Beyond the Films with Mark Herleman and Cloud City Casino with Michael Morris, both at StarWarsReport.com. That's where this shirt comes from. Um, you can, of course, find my videos like from the Star Wars Home Video Library, my Fantasy Flight Games reviews and things like that, and a PlayStation VR uh, buy-in guide for those who are looking for one of those for uh, Christmas and whatnot, uh, the holiday season here on the YouTube channel. You can find my book, A Saga on Home Video, a fan's guide to U.S. Star Wars home video releases over on Amazon. Uh, the newest book I've contributed to is actually a, a more civilized age, exploring the Star Wars expanded universe, uh, in which I have the afterword, uh, uh, Finding Our Lack of Blind Faith Disturbing, I believe is the name of the, uh, the afterword. Um, that just came out through Seaquart, available on Amazon and elsewhere and whatnot. And of course my Patreon, patreon.com slash Nathan P. Butler is where you'll find the exclusive Q&As for the highest tier uh, of supporters and for the $5 more tier of supporters, the Denizens of the Butler Universe, you'll find those exclusive uh, audio commentaries that I produce for episodes of The Clone Wars, Forces of Destiny, and eventually other stuff. So there we go. There's the spiel. Uh, so thank you all for watching. I will be doing more streams uh, sometime in the near future. Just not sure when. Again, this week, most likely Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. And if it's Wednesday or Thursday, you're looking at any time between 3.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Eastern uh, as the window in which it could be done. Saturday is kind of a crapshoot. Um, but thank you all for attending, watching, and I will get you later. Uh, be sure to jump onto Battlefront 2 if you have it, because you do want to make sure that you pick your faction as the season of The Last Jedi begins and gives you the choice of Resistance or First Order before more content gets added to the game next Tuesday. Thanks, guys.